Let's bring in Daniel Wow, Deputy Executive Director of the Institute of Public Affairs. Dan, let's start with the Teals. They are not happy about the standards of behaviour in Parliament House. They had a press conference today saying proper standards are rarely seen. Let's hear from the woman who only last week called Peter Dutton racist in Parliament House. Stop it at the top. At the end of the day, we hear a lot of talk about commitment to better standards, better behaviour, but that can only be modelled by the leadership. All those MPs take their cue from their leaders. They are elected leaders of their parties, from David Littleproud as the leader of the Nationals, Peter Dutton, the leader of the Liberal Party, Anthony Albanese, the leader of the uh, Labor Party. <laughs> Dan, it's uh, good that she knows who leads each party. That's, that's, <laughs> that's refreshing. Uh, she didn't mention the Greens there, I don't think, but I do wonder whether this is a case of... Uh, people in glass houses, not throwing stones. It, it was literally days ago where she had to withdraw a comment calling Peter Dutton racist in Parliament. That's right. It is the pot calling the kettle black. Um, you know, just look at your own behaviour. Um, of course, the Teals are the ones that thought it was a good idea to divide the country by race in the mm. Constitution and they're going to lecture everybody else about parliamentary behaviour. You're right, she didn't point out the Greens. I suspect the reason for that is because the Teals are just cashed up Greens. Uh, they vote, you know, analysis on Sky News yesterday revealed they vote with the Greens 60% of the time, coalition a third of the time. <laughs> so how are they really independent and in representing the views of their um, community? And I... Weren't even, like, it wasn't just that they were supposedly independent, mm. but they portrayed themselves as conservative alternatives. They were conservatives that cared about the environment. That was kind of the narrative that was pushed and they are nothing of the sort, as you've just explained. No, look, that's exactly right. And they're a part of a growing cohort of these inner city elites that are not interested in a, in a debate. They, you know, any time somebody raises a different opinion, they will try and silence people and they say, oh, it's about parliamentary behaviour. Well, you're allowed to have a debate in a democracy, particularly mm. in Parliament House, and they are not interested in debating the substance of the issues. No, and to me, it is tone policing. Uh, where do they get off telling others how they can express themselves? Of course, you don't cross the line into uh, straight-out abuse, like Zali indulged in calling Peter Dutton racist, and he obviously wouldn't say anything threatening. Yeah. But if you have got robust discussions happening in Parliament House, well, that's the place for it. I yeah. don't think that's uh, something to hold a press conference about. Now, we spoke on Monday about the Environment Minister using Indigenous heritage law to ban a $1 billion gold mine project in New South Wales. And now we learn that Tanya Plibersek is refusing to release the advice that led to that ban, which did take the resource industry by surprise. Uh, Tanya Plibersek made the decision despite local Aboriginal land councils saying there were no unmanageable concerns about the proposed site. Dan, the, the Environment Minister is defending this decision. We know it's going to cost 800 jobs. It's going to cost New South Wales around $200 million in um, uh, royalties and taxes. Surely we need a little bit more transparency here. Well, there's a pattern of repeated behaviour. Uh, we've seen this with the whole nature positive laws, which mm. is the big new green bureaucracy that this government wants to bring in. Uh, we put in a freedom of information request a couple of months ago to the department and they said there was something like 220,000 documents relating to the nature positive laws, but they weren't going to release them in, into public. So there's, there's a pattern here of having closed workshop meetings with stakeholders where you have to sign confidentiality or non-disclosure agreements in order to view legislation. We've also seen that with religious freedom laws and, again, and others. what's the point of going through that process if you can't actually then speak about what you've seen? Well, because the government just wants to say they've consulted. <laughs> they, they don't want people to be heard and they don't want people to speak out. So, you know, something else is going on here. Mm. But, you know, this is only going to be the beginning of what we see in terms of this anti-development uh, agenda from this government. And you've got people within the Indigenous community saying these Aboriginal heritage laws are being misused. They've been yep. corrupted, hijacked, whatever way you want to describe it. And, again, that's not only divisive, but uh, they're using that in really in a cynical manner to hold back this development at a time where we need 
investment. We need jobs. We need uh, more taxes and royalties to go to our state governments. Well, exactly. And depending on the location of a project, it can often be Indigenous people that are some of the main beneficiaries of, of these of projects, whether it is through like the royalty distribution, as you mentioned, or through employment opportunities, which is exactly what people on the ground need. This also has, I think, the vibes of the Western Australian cultural heritage laws mm, yes. in, in sort of using... Uh, claim tangible or intangible Indigenous cultural heritage as a mechanism to stop development and to stop investment. So I think that this may be uh, a sign of what is to come. Now, it must be a day ending in why, because The uh, Guardian is uh, published another hysterical piece of nonsense. I mean, it happens daily. I don't know why we even highlight it anymore. This time, they're pushing the theory that Elon Musk could plan an insurrection if Donald Trump loses the presidential election. Uh, let me read this extract to you. Britain's 2024 summer riots were Elon Musk's trial balloon. He got away with it. And if you're not terrified by both the extraordinary super national power of that and the potential consequences, you should be. Uh, are you terrified, Dan? Well, what I'm terrified is <laughs> is the sensorial nature of, of the left. I mean, in the UK, they are putting people in jail for putting memes and opinion on social media. I don't think The Guardian has spoken out against that no, at all. of course not. They support uh, it. They support it because they fundamentally, you know... Uh, as it currently stands, democracy is only working for one side. If, if you speak out as a mainstream citizen in the Western world, you will be brutally shut down or cancelled or put in jail. That is where we are. Twitter is perhaps one of the only forums that is left on the internet where people can have almost unfettered speech. Of course, with unfettered speech, people will say all kinds of mm. you know, horrible things that should be regulated by the platform in some way. Mm. But in terms of actually having going on there and putting your opinion, you can't do it on Facebook. You mentioned the nuclear posts are banned on Mm. or censored on Facebook. So this is the, one of the last avenues for free speech in the Western world, and the left is is mercilessly trying to shut it down. That's it. It's just like if they ha have a conservative program or columnist, even if 95% of the media leans the other way, they want to shut down that last remaining contrary opinion. Uh, Dan Wilde, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.